as a language learner, when you go to the country which whose language you are learning, so you know if you're learning English, which is going to be the case for people watching this, coming to the US or the UK or Australia or somewhere like that, is that you know you might very well be able to deal with a one-on-one -on -one chat, but as soon as you get into that two, three, four people, as soon as you get into a noisy or a difficult environment, your ability to understand things will absolutely drop. It certainly did for me, and I think that will be the case with a lot of people. Thank you, Ken, for taking time to speak with me again. And I really wanted to talk with you because I understand you recently were in Spain on a work trip. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, went over to Spain for about 12 days working, mostly in the countryside. So I was visiting large solar panel for, uh, sites, uh, taking photographs and um, doing interviews and doing some video. And then I had a couple of days in the company's office in Madrid. I was fortunate enough to be able to practice my Spanish, which uh, was initially quite terrifying. You learn a language and at the moment you have to use it doesn't matter how confident you are, doesn't matter how many times that you have Zoom chats with people, that face-to-face -face chat is terrifying to start with. Opening your mouth and starting to talk and hoping that what you're saying to the person immediately in front of you makes sense. Yeah, quite daunting, quite terrifying. That's interesting. So I was wondering, like, were you able to use the, the Spanish for your work? I know that you do videography, so were you able to... You obviously were speaking to people there and using it on the job. Yeah, I mean, in theory, the company I was working for, all of their employees should speak English. But a lot of them, the level of English, it was fairly basic. A lot of people did speak very good English. But I made a very conscious decision. I thought, this is two weeks worth of Spanish lessons I'm going to get free. I'm not going to have to pay for this. I'm, you know, it, so I, I absolutely made the point of always speaking in Spanish to, to the Spaniards. I think for some of them, it was they were quite surprised that I spoke Spanish. They literally were like, oh, my God, do you speak Spanish? And it's like, yes, and I'm going to speak Spanish. I'm not only going to relent when a, another member of the team came in who didn't speak Spanish, at which point I went into English. But I utilised that, that sort of 12 days-ish to, to spend as much of that time speaking in Spanish as possible. And it's great for your confidence. And, you know, the initial foray into speaking this language, which is not your native language, is terrifying. But once you get in there, once you start and you realise that you are holding conversations with people, your confidence builds quite quickly. I mean, the conversations weren't about rocket science. They, they, they weren't sort of um, about how we're going to get a man on the moon. They were fairly basic conversations about things. Um, and I was having to give instructions or telling people what I was doing to, to, to let them know why, you know, what I was filming and why I was filming. Like I said, they weren't rocket science conversations. They were just general kind of chats about my job, what I was doing, why I was there. So there was a there's a certain amount of repetition because you're saying these things several times to different people. But at the end of the period of time, at the end of the sort of the 12 days in Spain, I really kind of came back feeling a lot more buoyant in my perception of my own level of Spanish. And I also had a couple of people who were very complimentary to me saying, wow, you know, your Spanish is really good. And I'm like, well, I'm really happy about that because like I say, this... On a Zoom meeting or on a, one of these mediums like Zoom or, or Skype or what have you, it's very easy to hold a conversation, more so when you know that person also speaks English. So I do sort of chats with people on a sort of, you know, 50-50 basis. And it's always easy to be able to drop in the English word if you don't know the Spanish word. Um, and to some extent, that probably was the case in Spain, given the fact that they were supposed to speak English. But that, that wasn't always the case. So I just, my fallback was always speak Spanish, always answer and explain to people what I was doing. And in the office, that was, that was really, really helpful because I think I gained people's confidence and trust when I was able to speak to them in their own language, to talk to them about what I was doing and why I was doing it. And, and that, was, that was really useful. Uh, when we were out on location in the countryside, again, I was having to speak to, 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 to people in bars and restaurants, ordering food and all that kind of stuff. I was with other Spanish speakers, but for my own practice, they said, go for it, 
ask you know deal with deal with the waiters deal with the barman deal with the receptionist at the hotel which I did and again that was a lot more terrifying because those people on the hall didn't speak English so it was up to me to be able to explain what I was after and that yeah that, that, that's great when you realize that your level is good enough to be able to do that I mean I probably did make some mistakes I mean I would have made grammatical errors I would have got masculine and feminine mixed up in terms of some of the words but hey they understood me we were fed and watered and we had places to stay so I think I did a pretty reasonable job with my Spanish but uh, I think one of the big things which is terrifying initially if you get somebody who comes up to you and then speaks to you because you're not in control what I was doing I, I was I was going up and talking to people so I knew what the conversation was going to be about so when somebody came up to me and just started to speak to me in Spanish. And you're not in control of what the subject matter is. And that is a little more problematic because your brain, you've got to get your brain into that gear of dealing with the message which has just come to you, dealing with, with that message, that piece of information, and then replying to it. Whereas when I was initiating a chat, I knew what I wanted to say. I'd, I'd had that few seconds to kind of go, right, I need to kind of say this is what I want to say. And go into the chat with that kind of that mindset of yes, I know what I want to say. This is how I'm going to say it. But yeah, if somebody came up to me and just started to speak to me in Spanish, it was like it took a few seconds to get my brain into gear and work out exactly what they were after. Even though that conversation might have been relatively banal, relatively simple. Um, so that was probably one of my the major observations for me was that if I was in control of the chat, if I was initiating the chat, it was a lot easier. If somebody came up, it, it took a few seconds just to get my head around things. Well, thank you. That's amazing. Because like, I feel when I am trying to speak with people in Spanish, my mind, I know like most of the nouns and what I want to say, but then my mind is like, okay, am I supposed to what? I need to think about the conjugation. I need to think about the past tense. Mm -hmm. I need to think about the different past tenses and be thinking about all that while I'm trying to speak. And I find that's what slows me down and probably what causes me to not probably speak as much in Spanish because I'm fine if I'm writing or typing. It's a struggle for me to know, am I supposed to say imperfect or preterite and yeah. all the different tenses there are. So I imagine like making mistakes, grammatical, feminine versus masculine, this tense mm. versus that tense is something that for sure happens. And I think even when I'm speaking in English, we're probably making grammatical mistakes mm -hmm. here and there because that's just the way it goes when you're speaking live. But in any case, I wonder, did you have any difficulty understanding people with different accents? On the whole, most of the people I understood, there were a couple of accents. We, we interviewed a shepherd and he was... So we were doing a, a sort of sit-down interview and I think I understood the, the gist of the talk. Good morning, Isabel. Well, this is an interview we did with a shepherd yesterday who was, to say the least, extremely, extremely difficult. Quite a few times, I literally had no idea what this guy was talking about, and he was literally decimating the um, the ends of words. So yes, it was slightly difficult to say the least, but generally, I'm not having a massive problem. But I would I would say probably no more than about thirty percent. And even the person who was a Spaniard who was interviewing him said he's a, he's he was tough. He was tough. That was very very regional accent, very much. Um, country accent and to some extent probably an uneducated person um, I knew because when we had paperwork to sign he, he was he was literate this guy was about 80 and he was really really tough uh, and a couple of other people I had problems with just because they spoke so fast and my brain was just desperately trying to catch up and deal with that and on top of it, of another accent, it, it proved to be a challenge, but it was only a couple. On the whole, I didn't have that many problems. I think probably the people in the countryside, my chats were a lot simpler. So they really were sort of basic questions, listening for sort of basic answers, you know, sorry, in a bar, asking for things and 
kind of these chats were, were definitely not rocket science chats. They were really simple kind of chats, which we probably repeat on a regular basis when we're doing chats with language exchanges. So that wasn't so much of a problem. Like I said, the, where the problem ar arose, I think, is where or arises is where you get into a much more complicated chat. You really have to lift your level of Spanish or English or whatever to be able to deal with those types of chats. It's not it's not the kind of chat you have on a relatively regular basis. It's not something you repeat on a regular basis. And I think one of the biggest where I generally had the biggest of the issues where is where I had two or three Spaniards speaking together. One on one is relatively easy because I think to some extent you can control that. Because it's very easy to ask the person to repeat something and say, I don't quite understand that. When you're dealing with or sitting in a chat with two natives, it can become quite daunting. But I mean, you can probably just about follow the chat again, as long as it's not some in-depth subject about politics or getting a man on the moon. You know, and if, if you've already got a, if you roughly know what the chat's about, because it's a business chat, because it's about the company, that's relatively easy, but if it was something which was a subject matter outside of, of my sort of understanding, my vocabulary in Spanish, it became really, really difficult. When chatting with, say, like three people, that was really problematic because trying to follow three, three different people speaking uh, quite quickly, that is really where I started to, to lose my ability to, to follow the chats, to, to, to kind of follow the thread of the chats. And certainly, if you can do that, you, you your level of that language would have to be quite high. Mine's not high enough to do that. I think mine's a really decent B2 level. It's not quite C1, but I really couldn't follow three people. Like I said, one, relatively easy most of the time. Two, if I knew the subject matter, I could generally get by. But when it came to three people or more, that was it. I was completely stuffed, as we say in English. I was stuffed. I was never, never going to be able to follow that chat. So... Uh, I just used it as an exercise as to pick up the words and the expressions which which I could, even if I didn't understand what the, the context of the chat. Yeah, I was in Mexico now four years ago and one-on-one, -on -one, well, most of the time the family wanted to speak either half English or half Spanish because they obviously wanted to learn English. But one time I went to a party, it was like the Three Kings Day and I went to a party and that was difficult because there was lots of people noise and lots of people and lots of conversations going on so it sounds similar where you have like if you're one-on-one -on -one or maybe two people you can follow it but then you add that third person and then I think you talked about many times going to the restaurants and the pubs mm -hmm. where there's lots of background noise and more people to talk and follow conversations with well I met up with uh, somebody who I chat with regularly on a zoom chat and uh, we went out for a meal and it was a Spanish restaurant. It's a very noisy. People are, um, they're loud. They like to be kind of, well, they're very gregarious, so they're very loud and they're very sort of bouncy. And, and their restaurants, they're sort of marble floors or hard floors, and there's a lot of echo. Somebody who I regularly speak to and never have a problem with, uh, we were sitting having a meal and her husband doesn't speak any English, so it was all in Spanish. He's a little more problematic to understand, but the noise level made what would have been a relatively simple conversation really difficult because I think when we're, when we're chatting with somebody in Zoom, we're really concentrating on what people are saying. We're you know, super attentive to make sure that we understand every single word and that we can answer correctly. Um, but when you're in a noisy environment or in an environment where lots of people are speaking, the challenge is upped massively because the clarity of speech suddenly goes down um, and that noise level makes the uh, makes listening much more problematic you really have you really are struggling to to pick up every single grammatical difference and sometimes the the difference between words the, with spanish grammar is quite subtle and i did find that noisy environments generally were my biggest where where I had the most problems. If it was a relatively quiet office, I didn't have a problem. But in a noisy bar or a noisy restaurant or a noisy environment with lots of other people, it became 
super difficult to be able to follow those chats. So um, that's kind of something to consider, I think, when, as a language learner, when you go to the country which whose language you are learning, so, you know, if you're learning English, which is going to be the case for the people watching this, coming to the US or the UK or Australia or somewhere like that, is that, you know, you might very well be able to deal with a one-on-one -on -one chat, but as soon as you get into that two, three, four people, as soon as you get into a noisy or a difficult environment, your ability to understand things will absolutely drop. It certainly did for me, and I think that will be the case with a lot of people. And obviously, if your confidence in speaking that language isn't massively high, that is going to you know, compound your problems because, because, one, your lack of confidence in speaking, and two, not really being sure whether what you've heard is correct because the noise around you within the conversation makes it more difficult to be absolutely 100% clear. I think that will give those people who wanted to practice their language skills more issues. But hey, that's the nature of the real world. I mean, you know, we're all watching or we're all in chats and watching things in our own living rooms where the noise levels are so low and we can, you know, we can hear everything's being said in the chat. But in the real world, in that big bad world outside of your living room, when you go into a bar, into a restaurant, when you're in a workplace, uh, when you're on the street, there's a lot of noise. And that does make clarity of speech much more problematic. For me, like even it's communicating in English when I'm going into a crowded restaurant, like we'll have like work events and we go into a crowded restaurant. I have a hard time. I can really only focus on the person next to me. I can't follow all the different conversations. And I almost sometimes wish that we would pick a quieter place to go to because I'm like, okay, how can we get to know our colleagues when we're in such a noisy place and our, our restaurants and have televisions going music and all kinds of distractions as it is. Um, so I definitely can understand that. I understand actually the friend that you went to go visit was our, our friend Isabel from our group. Yeah. Yes, yes, it was. So that was lovely. I mean, it was lovely being able to meet up with somebody face to face, especially after months and months and months of chatting, you know, because we, we do a sort of fairly regular chat. We kind of, you know, we just chat about anything and everything. Just to physically meet somebody off the forum was great. It was, and it was very fortuitous that where my job was, we were right next to her city, so it was relatively easy to pop in and see her. The chat in the restaurant with her and her husband was a tiring two hours because we, we, we sort of sat and had lunch for two hours. Very typical Spanish, very long lunches. But yeah, at the end of two hours, having to deal with speaking in Spanish. Wow. So, so I came out of the chat with Isabel after, and her husband, sort of two-hour chat. The Spanish have this expression, which is hecho polvo, which is made of dust. Uh, and that was just about described the way I felt because I was ruined. It was like my head was just frazzled. You know, two hours of constant chat in Spanish in a very difficult environment because of the noise um, with her and her husband both chatting to me. Well, yeah, yeah definitely. I, I, was, I, was, I was shot at the end of that. <laughs> I was like, suddenly realised how tiring it is having to concentrate on dealing in another language. Absolutely. I feel like after like even an hour one-on-one, -on -one, like I would take lessons for a whole hour in just in Spanish and my brain is tired after that. Um, one question actually Isabel had was like, she wanted to know, did you find that people were patient with you trying to understand what you're saying and, or did you feel like they made an effort to understand you? I think they were incredibly patient. I think my level is good enough that people didn't need to be patient with me as in it wasn't word word, word, I can speak quite fluently in Spanish, especially on those sort of those themes, it's relatively easy. But I think the Spanish are pretty, they're, they're, they're very tolerant anyway, they're very patient because not a huge number outside of the major cities actually speak English. So for you to make an effort and speak to them in Spanish, they're just really happy that they can, you know, you're prepared to do that and you can do that. And obviously the higher your level, that shows a kind of commitment that you have to learning their language and, and trying to integrate in some respects, or at least trying to understand their culture because you want to understand their language. So I don't think I had any real problems with anybody. And I, I certainly think that the Spaniards on the whole were really, really patient with me. 
So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I had a problem with that. And I think that you're always going to meet people who are going to be impatient, who, who for some reason or another, don't want to listen to you. But that's their problem. They've lost the ability to speak with somebody else. They've lost the ability to be, I'm not going to say educated, but to kind of get a grasp of somebody else who's prepared to take time out of their, their, their daily schedules to learn their language. If they don't want to speak to you, fine. Plenty of other people are more than happy to have chats. And I, I again, I took every opportunity to, to chat with people out, not, I'm not within the work environment, but when we were sitting down having coffee, I would strike up conversations with people to, to practice, just to practice and just have a chat with them. And people were great. They, you know, they, they thought it was fantastic. I was happy to speak to them in Spanish. And um, although, I mean, half the problem is because they, <coughs> A lot of people also want to speak English. They want to practice their English. There's a there's a massive there's a massive kind of I think sort of um, diplomatic fight breaking out in people's heads because I you know I help people in terms of um, classes not classes of English but I speak to people in English to help them who are who are non Spanish speakers. You know, in Spain, my my theory was I'm in Spain, I know Spanish, I'm going to speak Spanish, and you know. Come hella high water, whatever happens, I'm going to speak Spanish. I'm going to speak Spanish. I'm going to make that effort to speak Spanish. Because one, I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money learning this language. So, you know, I, 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 want, to, I want to get some value for money out of the time and the effort I've been putting into learning this language. And that sort of 12 days in Spain was, was yep. Yeah, well well spent the money was well spent because i i absolutely used every moment i could sitting in restaurants i was listening to people's conversations next to me just just sat there and just thought okay just listen just listen just listen because even that is great practice because you know i've got no idea of what the, the subject matter was about so i'm just listening and going, oh, i understand that oh really did that happen <laughs> i mean i mean you know normally you wouldn't do that because that's you know it's not very polite but i just thought i'm going to use every opportunity that i can to listen to native spanish speakers speaking to other natives and really try and get a, a grasp as to what these chats and conversations are about. I wrung the neck out of my 12 days, as we would say. I wrung the neck out of it, getting as much out of those 12 days in Spain as I possibly could. Well, just using that time to, to, to speak in Spanish as much as I possibly could. I, like I say, outside of the few occasions when I was dealing with a, another Brit who didn't speak Spanish, or on a couple of occasions, we had um, other people come into the office and their Spanish just wasn't good enough because they were from Romania or um, Lithuania and they, they, they had a better level of English than they did Spanish. So at that particular point, it was just easier in, in speaking in English and, and they were non-native. So I was less, my head was less, that's fine, I can deal with this. But yeah, I just took the opportunity to always, always, always speak in Spanish. Sounds like you had a great opportunity to immerse yourself. I remember when I went to Mexico, it was a similar thing where I went there to speak Spanish, but I also had to remember, in my case, I was going and being hosted by a family that wanted to also speak English. So yeah. I didn't get to immerse myself completely, but probably 50-50 in the language. But I knew also I could fall back to like, I knew that their level of English was better than my level of Spanish. Exactly. So if I didn't have a particular word, I could fall back to English. But it sounded like you had this great opportunity, you really immersed yourself every moment that you could. And then one last question actually from Isabel is like, why did you, like you, you chose actually to learn Spanish as your, I don't know how many languages that you speak besides English, but as one of your second languages? Your second language, I speak English, Spanish, and rubbish most of the time, but <laughs> the story of my Spanish learning goes back to a young Spanish lady I met some 35 years ago. I think it's quite often the case is that you learn a language because you end up with a, a partner who is from a, from a different country. I've never learned Japanese. But I was wondering about that. Uh, no, 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 no. That's far too difficult. Spanish gives me enough, enough grief. So yes, I, I was going out with this a Spanish lady 35 years ago, um, ended up living in Spain for about a year and a half. So went from zero to being able to hold conversations in Spanish, came back to the UK and over the, sort of the, the subsequent sort of 30 odd years, only ever really used my Spanish on occasions, went to Latin America, used it 
and then I've gone to Spain a few times and worked and then occasionally used a bit of Spanish when I've been abroad in another country and found myself somebody not speaking English, but actually having a level of Spanish. And actually that's been really kind of useful. But about four years ago, I went to Spain for the same company. We weren't guided around. We had to go around all these sites. And I realized my Spanish had absolutely plummeted. Um, it was It was awful. I was able to get by, but I, I realized that I'd lost the fluency that I used to have. I'd kind of, yeah, I'd lost the fluency that I had. I, I made the decision when I came back that I was going to brush up my Spanish. And obviously, you know, with things like YouTube and WhatsApp groups, that's really, really easy. Absolutely brushed up. Um, I, my level now is so much more advanced than it was when I lived in Spain 30 odd years ago. I think one of the things I did learn when I lived in Spain 30 odd years ago was like, they, again, the Spanish have this expression as sin vergüenza, without shame. And I am without shame. I don't, I will just speak. I will just speak. As I always say, nobody's going to die if you make a mistake. If you get low and lack incorrectly, you know, you're only generally asking for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and you like this kind of food and that kind of food. So if you make a mistake, nobody's going to die as a result of you getting low and lack wrong or LNA yet. Go for it. Just hell, just speak at least because there's a very good chance that the person you're talking to doesn't speak your language. So you have the advantage, you know, that your level of their language is a hell of a lot higher than their understanding of your language. So you have the upper hand. And if you make a mistake, so what? Because it's only with speaking that you're going to improve. And speaking with a native, wow. You know, that's the best opportunity you can get to improve your level of your chosen language. So, yeah, my advice is, uh, if I use the Spanish expression, is not Tina's Berwenta. Don't have shame. Just go for it and speak. Go for it and speak. I like that. It reminds me of one of my coworkers that said, but basically I said, don't worry about it, Michelle. This is not rocket science. It's not open heart surgery. No one's going to yeah. die. Go for it. Absolutely. I think yeah. that's good advice for people when they're going to go to a foreign country to try to brush up on their language to think about maybe places that they're going to visit, maybe pick quieter restaurants, maybe pick a quieter cafe if you want to really get a chance to speak to people that try to avoid places where there's going to be a lot of noise, but then just go for it. Like you said, go for it and speak and don't have shame. Yeah, absolutely. No shame whatsoever because, you know, you'll be walking out of that restaurant, out of that bar, out of that hotel or whatever it might be a day later, you know, People will have forgotten the errors or won't even recognize the errors that you've made. You know, they, they're, they're just going to be going, that's, that's another person who's just left the bar. I've got another problem to deal with. That, that you know, your, your mistake in that piece of grammar or mispronunciation of that word is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. And if they're really good, which, you know, most people are, they will help you out. You know, if it's, they will give you the benefit of the doubt, I think, you know, we do, I certainly do, when I'm on chats with, with people, I go out of my, you know, I, I probably go out of my way more than most or in your world as well because you understand the, the problems of learning a language, but you just give a little bit more. You just kind of go, oh, yeah, I, I think I understand that. Yeah, if I piece those words together, that makes sense to me. I kind of get what they're talking about. It doesn't have to be absolute perfect like a native. It's, it's stringing words together which convey the message that you need to convey. It might be missing a few words. It might not be perfect, but hell, like I said, you have the advantage. You speak their language. They don't speak yours most of the time. Thank you so much. I'm hoping to go knock on some wood right now to Spain next summer and visit with Isabel and get a chance to immerse myself, probably spend half the time in English and half the time in Spanish. So that way it's beneficial to Isabel as well. But that's my plan. Brilliant. Well, just get her not just get her to not take you to the same restaurant that took me to because it was so noisy. <laughs> All right. We'll be looking for some quiet places for sure. So thank you again so much. And hopefully people will find this conversation helpful when they're planning out their visits. No, thank you very much. It's been a great chat. And like I say, like you said, I hope people find some of my experiences useful in terms of them visiting the country of, you know, visiting that country and speaking, in this case, English. Go for it and enjoy it. Okay. Thank you. Until next time. Thank you. 